Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about variable air volume system and we will have a comparison between this system and constant air volume system. So let's begin. First of all, constant air volume, uh, which is vary the temperature of the system and keeping the air volume constant. So CV system has constant air volume flow and variable air temperature. So when we are dealing with supply air to the space, this supply air, the temperature of the air will be varied while the CFM, which is the air flow, will be constant. This system delivers a constant volume of air to the space and to maintain the required space temperature at all load conditions varies the temperature of this air. In this example, the temperature of the air is varied by controlling the capacity of the central cooling coil. In the full load condition, if we calculate the supply air according to the formula of sensible heat gain divided to constant multiplied by delta T, we will get, considering the, uh, the supply air temperature is 55 Fahrenheit, 55 degrees Fahrenheit, we will get the supply air flow 1840. In the part load condition, we are calculating the supply air new temperature according to the demand. So in the first case, we consider that the total sensible heat gain is 40,000, which is given for this space. If we, in the part load, if we have half of this 20,000 BTU, we will get, if we substitute in the formula, we will get the supply dB is increased from 55 to 65 to match the demand of this space. So the conclusion as the space sensible load drops from 40,000 BTU to 20,000 BTU, this system modulates the temperature of the constant 1840 CFM supply air from 55 Fahrenheit to 65 Fahrenheit. The drawback, because this type of system can respond to the demands of only one thermostat, it can serve only those buildings, spaces, with similar cooling requirements, if a building has many spaces with diverse cooling needs, each must be served by its own system. Next, we have terminal reheat system. And this system has the same as normal CAV, except that it can serve multiple spaces with constant volume. So. This system designs can serve the cooling requirements of more than one space with a central fan and cooling coil. However, to do so, the cool primary air must be either reheated or mixed with warm air to produce the supply temperatures needed to balance the various space cooling loads. The terminal reheat system uses a central air handler and cooling coil to deliver cool primary air to all the spaces. Each space has its own heating coil to temper the air to satisfy the space load. Of course, any heat added to meet the part load requirements of a space becomes a cooling load that the refrigeration system must overcome. This can result in a nearly constant refrigeration load even when the building is at part load conditions. Therefore, reheating cooled air to achieve part load supply air temperature control is not very energy efficient and is used only in special constant volume applications or when there is a free source of heat, for example, heat recovery. In this system, we have primary air PA, which is the air delivered by a central supply fan to a terminal unit and we have supply air which is the air delivered to the space so the space has two stages in this system while in the normal system it is only one stage 
from the cooling coil itself. Variable air volume VAV system. This system has variable air volume and constant air temperature. A variable air volume VAV system delivers the primary air at a constant temperature and varies the air flow to maintain the required space temperature at all load conditions. Why we are using VAV? We are using for two reasons. For energy savings, the VAV has reduced fan energy and reduced refrigeration energy. And for comfort, uh, it has dedicated terminal units and dedicated thermostats. In the full load, we can get the supply air flow in the full load, 40,000, we can get 1,840. In the part load, 20,000 BTU, we can get 920 CFM. Conclusion. One reason to use VAV system is the potential of for part load energy savings. The part load energy savings inherent with the, AV, the VAV system are twofold. First, the air volume reduction creates an opportunity to reduce the fan energy required to move this air. Second, the reduced air flow across the cooling coil causes the refrigeration system to throttle back in order to stabilize the primary air temperature. In turn, this results in a reduction in refrigeration energy compared to full load. Another reason for VAV is to cost effectively provide improved comfort. A VV system is capable of controlling space temperature in many spaces with dissimilar cooling and heating requirements while using only one central air handling unit. This accomplished by providing one VAV terminal unit and thermostat for each independently controlled space. When the sun is beating against the west side of the building in the late afternoon, a VAV system can provide an increased amount of cool supply air to keep the spaces on the west exposure comfortable, while throttling back the air flow to the spaces on the east exposure so as not to overcool them. VAV building characteristics Variable thermal load profiles in the spaces as we see here in this diagram. The need of multiple independently controlled spaces. And finally, the existence of common return air path. Instead of using many return duct, we can use general plenum duct. System comparison. In the constant normal CAV single zone, we have constant fan energy, refrigeration energy savings, delivers comfort to only one thermal zone. In the terminal reheat CAV, we have constant fan energy, nearly constant refrigeration energy, delivers comfort to many spaces inefficiently, and finally reheat energy increased at part load, which is loss. And variable air volume, VAV, we have the best fan energy savings, the best refrigeration energy savings, and delivers comfort to many spaces efficiently. And thus, the VAV is the best system among the three systems. With this, we reach to the end of our, our video for today. Uh, the next video will be VAV systems and components. We will talk about the main five components of the VAV as we are seeing in this uh, photo. Thank you for watching.